All right. So last week, what we did, uh, we did the comprehension close, identified collocations, words that constantly come together, and we learned what's the difference between hibernation and sleep. Today's lesson on editing, we're going to learn the difference between grammatical errors and common spelling errors. Okay. I think for our level, spelling errors, especially when you're in P6, shouldn't be that much of a problem anymore. Uh, you just need to pay attention to the commonly misspelled words. Okay, commonly misspelled words. Okay, what's harder usually is grammatical errors uh, because we find it very difficult to spot tenses. We find it difficult to spot the differences in prepositions and uh, subject verb agreement. Okay, so editing grammatical errors is actually harder than commonly misspelled words. Okay, okay today's word is non sequitur. Non sequitur. Say it out loud. Okay, don't say it out loud. Say it in your mind. Non sequitur. Okay, sequitur means something that is completely illogical or unconnected. Say, for example, hey, um, hey, Frank, what are you doing after school? And Frank answers, did you know Jackie Chan broke every single one of his bones? It's completely unrelated. I'm asking you, what do you want to do after school? And you tell me, did you know Jackie Chan broke all of his bones? That's unrelated. So a non sequitur means things that are completely unrelated to what we are talking about or what we are discussing. But it takes a bit of brain to understand. So if you are like blur blur or ging gong, <laughs> then don't read it. But if you want to test your English skills, you can read non sequitur. Um, so this is non sequitur. Um, I wanted to know, know Jean's opinion about our latest project. But all I got was a non sequitur about his dancing poodle. Non sequitur. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, Desmond Doss, uh, worked example. So we'll do this together. Is someone we must show our respect to. He is credited of saving 75 soldiers during one of the battles of World War II in the Pacific. Okay. Now, credited. Uh, it's very rarely followed with the word off. You don't hear the answer credited off something. Credited for, maybe. He's credited for, sometimes we use the word credited for. But credited by is wrong. Um, oh, you can be credited by, but you can only be credited by a person. Okay, I was credited by my teacher for solving this question. But you see, uh, um, he's not credited by any of these people. Nobody's crediting him. Nobody is giving him the uh, recognition for something good. Okay. So in this case, uh, if you are recognized for doing something good or you are responsible for doing something good, the correct preposition to use is credited with. Okay. So you can't say he's credited for, you can't say he's credited off, you can't say he's credited by. There's only one answer to this, and that's credited with. There's, there's no bubble questions, don't worry, no bubbles yet, no bubbles yet. The bubbles will come soon, okay? So credited with. Okay, credited with means you are responsible for doing something good, okay? Um, this word here, you read it carefully and listed, okay, means to be recruited or called up. Okay, but you can't write recruited, you must write something that sounds the same and listed. All right, so enough of the very tragic story of mine. Let's talk about this now. Okay, I want you to identify. So this question is quite hard. Identify the word that I've highlighted, okay, the words that are written in blue, the highlighted words, which word, okay, difficult question now, which word is a grammatical error? Which word is grammatically incorrect? Five, four, three, two, one, there you go. Okay, so the answer, um, wow, roughly around less than 50% of you got this correct, um, and a good 25% of you chose undeniably. Now, there's nothing wrong with undeniably because the word delicious, boys and girls, means it's an adjective. Okay, Delicious is an adjective. So that means that the word undeniably, which is describing the adjective, has to be an adverb. 
Okay, and how do I know it's an adverb? An adverb is the correct thing to use to describe an adjective. Uh. The adverb has an L-Y. So undeniably, in terms of grammar, is correct. Okay, so undeniably is not the right answer. Okay, we want to find that something is wrong. So the next most answered uh, option is number three, four. Reputation. Now, reputation for being unhealthy is fine. Okay, or reputation of being unhealthy. Both are fine. Okay, reputation for or reputation of is both fine. So if you think it's off, it's not a uh, reputation for is okay. Reputation of is okay. Um, what is not okay is number four. Now, there's a thing about though uh, that I want to teach you guys. It's a little bit tricky. So please listen carefully, okay? Though is a conjunction. And after this conjunction, though, you must use a verb phrase. Okay. Um, but in this case here, though it's reputation for being unhealthy, there's no verb. If I wanted to use the word though, it should be though it has a reputation of being unhealthy, a reputation for being unhealthy. Okay, so I change it and I add a verb inside, which is the word has a reputation. Then it becomes a correct because though requires a word phrase. Okay. Um, so I want to change it in such a way that the second part of the phrase doesn't require a verb because this second part here has no verb, okay? But it has a noun. So this is a noun phrase. Okay. And in order for this noun phrase to be correct, you have to use the word despite. Okay, so though is wrong, Despite is correct. Okay, despite is used to show that the phrase that comes after is a noun phrase, that there are no verbs there. It is just to say that, oh, despite it has uh, its reputation, noun, it's a noun phrase, no verbs. Okay, so bubble question number two. Also called instant ramen, the pre cooked dried noodles packed with flavoring powder and seasoning oil has often been criticized as a meal devoid of nutrients, okay? Okay, they are in blue. The words are in blue, but they are highlighted in yellow. Sheesh. Okay, the words, I highlighted them for you in case you can't find them. Okay, so which word uh, in the text in blue is grammatically incorrect or the highlighted word? Lah? Okay, it's called incorrect, has incorrect, the incorrect. Now, devoid is wrong, but is it grammatically wrong, boys and girls? 79%, no, I keep saying 79%, 40% of you. Devoid is, is wrong, but it's not grammatically wrong. What's wrong with devoid? It's wrong because of its spelling. The wrong word, the wrong word here is number two, has. Okay, has is wrong. Why? Let me explain to you why has is wrong. Huh? This pre-dried noodles is the subject. Okay, the pre-dried noodles is the subject. And because noodles is the subject, noodles is plural. Okay, noodles is plural. One noodle, many noodles. I know it sounds weird. Why? But you see, uh, why is noodles plural? When your mom serves you noodles, if your mom, um, if, if we assume that your mom has good grammar, your mom will say, hey, boy, the noodles are ready. Your mom don't say, hey, the noodles is ready. Oh, they may, but it's wrong, okay? So the noodles are ready. Noodles are. And so noodles is plural. Therefore, the correct answer is number two. Has is wrong. The noodles are ready. The noodles are plural. Has must be also plural, which is have. Let me correct myself. I, I did a mistake. I thought ramen was the subject ramen is not the subject noodles is the subject so noodles has to be plural okay so if you were in the previous class and you realize hey mr lewis is teaching you something different i made a mistake the last class so if you're here in this class and you realize that hey it's a little bit different i made a mistake ramen is not supposed to be the subject noodles is the subject therefore the answer is number two has is wrong change it to have
Uh, number three, just how unhealthy are instant noodles? Okay, how do you spell this word correctly? This word is devoid. Okay, this word is devoid. So bubble number three in three, two, one, devoid. How do you spell it? Um, the word for this is devoid, spelled D-E-V-O-I-D. Devoid, boys and girls, means lacking of or without. So if you say, I am devoid of ideas, it means that I have no ideas or I am without ideas. Or my head is devoid of hair, which means that I have no hair on my head. And you can see my glorious shiny forehead. Okay, okay great. Um, next question. Number four. How do you spell the word retain? I, I, you know, I realized that it's a lot easier when I read it out for students. But if I get them to do it without me reading it out, then they are unable to answer. So the next one, right, I'm not going to read it out for you. I'm not going to make it super easy. Let's answer question number four in three, two, one. All right. Uh, retain is spelled R-E-T-A-I-N-E-D. Guess what? We have a 99% rate answer for this. Congratulations. Good 10 bubbles for you. Um, anyways, number five. According to the World Instant Noodles Association, WINA, 52 countries consumed 97.7 billion servings last year alone. Between its highest consumers are China and Hong Kong. Question number five coming to you in three, two, one. Um, okay, not too bad. We have got 80% of you getting this right. Uh, better than the last few questions. Um, those of you got this wrong. Now the word between is wrong. Because between is a choice of two. Okay, so you can use this. Um, between nasi lemak and roti prata, between nasi lemak and roti prata, I prefer nasi lemak. That is between the choice of two. Okay, uh, but between all the breakfast foods is wrong, right? Among all the foods I can have for breakfast or all the food I can have for breakfast, I like nasi lemak the best, which means that you have all these different choices. You like one of them, you use among okay if you could only choose between two then you use the word between okay between is only for two so the correct answer is among my my students tell me it's among not among um both are fine among among okay so the answer is among and not between number six which word in uh oh is it the same one okay number six among its highest consumers are China and Hong Kong, which together consume 40.43 billion servings, followed with Indonesia, with 13.2 billion servings consumed. Okay, so question number six, which word is grammatically incorrect? So the answer here, let's see your answers. Um, oh dear, only 50% of you got this right. Um, the answer here is, let's see, most of you chose number two, which? For those of you who chose which, uh, do you mind if you write what you think the correct answer is? Because I cannot think of what can replace the word which. If you have another, buy, buy together, buy together is really strange. Which change to buy? Buy together, no, it doesn't make sense, but. These two countries, I'm referring to these two countries. So they are two countries, they are not humans, you use which. When? When is used to refer to time. You can't cancel the word, by the way. This is editing, so you have to change the word. Um, yeah, you can't cancel the word which. Okay, so which is wrong. Uh, the correct word is with. Uh, with is the correct answer. Okay, so if you chose which, uh, you are wrong. Uh, you cannot say which. Um, with is changed to by. So with changed to followed by. Okay. For example, I scored first in class. Um, my twin brother scored, scored second. Okay, And we are followed by our cousin who scored third. That means we are both ahead of him. He is behind us, but he's still one of the highest. Okay, So followed by the third in, the third in class. So to speak, is Indonesia with 13.2 billion 
consume. They are followed by. So you have to replace with with by. Okay. You need to just identify the word that's grammatically wrong and change that word. Number six, number seven, the researchers analyzed the health and diet of 11,000 South Koreans between the ages 19 to 64. Ah, this question, boys and girls, always, always gets students. All my P6 students always get it wrong. So let's get it right. Three, two, one. Okay. Now, this question is very commonly answered wrong. The wrong answers were shared out equally. There are a consistent number of wrong answers. So let's talk about it all. Um, I, I'm not sure why those of you who chose analyzed. Uh, I if you are if you chose analyzed, could you tell me what the right answer you thought was? Okay, because the analyzed is the past tense. Okay, and this anal analysis happened in the past. So analyzed is grammatically correct. Um, diet and health, these are two separate things. So if you say diet and health, it can't be diet or health, right? I'm not sure what other words can you use. Oh, you guys chose the right answer. You're supposed to pick the word that's the wrong answer. You're supposed to pick the word that's the wrong answer. So this is very tricky, right? You will pick N because you think the answer is N, but I did not tell you to pick N. I told you to pick the word that's wrong, okay? So that's why it's so tricky. So many of you pick N because you thought N was the right answer and is the right answer. But in this case, you need to pick the word that's wrong. And N, so tricky, right? Tricky, yeah? The word two is wrong because of the word between. Right? Between the ages of 19 to 64. Okay, not 264, but between the ages of 19 and 64. So while N is the correct answer, you're not supposed to pick the correct answer. You're supposed to pick the wrong answer. Yikes, sorry. Okay. Oh, right. Number eight. The study showed that South Korean women had a high risk in developing metabolic syndrome due to the large amount of ramen they consume. So South Korean women, any of you Koreans here, if you're a female and Korean, stop eating so much ramen. Three, two, one. Okay. Those of you who are um, got it wrong, very few of you got it wrong, in fact. 85% uh, of us got it right. Well done. Um, it's not high risk in. The correct word is high risk of developing. And because this answer is so well answered, I think, okay, I might have to answer, talk about option number two. Those of you who answered number two, uh, do you mind telling me what you wrote for your option for number two? Showed that. Rick and roll. <laughs> Showed that. Okay, for one question, I'll play Rick roll, okay? One question. Showed that. Anybody who wrote that as your answer, can you tell me what word you used to replace that? I cannot think of any other any other answer other than um, in. Oh, most of you clicked wrongly. Yeah, I cannot think of anything else other than high risk of developing. You cannot have a high risk in developing. Due to is definitely correct. Developing is correct. So the only thing that that, I don't know why it's that, okay? Um, this word attribute, yikes. Attribute, how do you spell attribute? The answer should be, uh, so let's let's ignore this question. The correct way to spell attribute, right, is a. Guess it in your head. Guess it in your head. Okay, which one is attribute? Guess in your brain. Guess in your mind. What the way to spell attribute? And I'm gonna reveal the answer in three, two, one. The word is this, attribute a t t r i b u t. So if you guessed it correct, yay! Congratulations, you have the moral victory here. Well, hey, all right. <laughs> Back to this question. So 20, uh, 10, 10 bubble question for all of you. Uh, answer number 10, this is number 10 in three, two, one. Okay, very good, uh, 100%, no, not 100%. A good 80% of you got this right. Okay, 80% of you got this right. The correct way to spell diabetes is not number two. Yes, diabetes may cause you to die, but that's not how you spell it, sorry. Diabetes may cause you to die, but that's not how you spell it. It's pronounced as the correct pronunciation is diabetes. 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 So answer number one, diabetes. Number 11. Oh, this is quite difficult. Um, you're going to get 10, 20 bubbles for this, I think. A culprit identified was the substance found in ramen called tetra tertiary butyl hydroquinone, a petroleum industry byproduct used to preserve cheap 
processed food. Which word that I highlight is incorrect? Answer for question 11 in 3, 2, 1. 25% of you got this wrong and you all, 25% of you chose this answer number two, byproduct. Boys and girls, what's a byproduct? There's nothing wrong with byproduct. Uh. Byproduct means the secondary product. Or something that is not the main product. Okay, so say for example, um, when we rear sheep, okay, when we rear sheep or goats, right? When we rear sheep or goats, right? We no sheep. Okay, we we rear sheep sometimes for the meat that they have. So some people rear sheep because they rear them for meat. Their meat quite valuable. Okay, um, on top of that, they have wool. Okay, so the wool is not the main product of why we rear sheep. Some people rear sheep because they want the meat. The wool just happens to be a, a product from the sheep that they can use to cut and to shear off and to sell as a sort of fabric. Okay, so byproduct means not the main product. Okay, byproduct means not the main product. Yeah, it's like the secondary product or not the, yeah, not they didn't grow or they didn't rear it for that. Okay, so that's the byproduct. Uh, nothing wrong with byproduct, boys and girls. Byproduct is fine. So the correct answer is number one, Earl culprit. Now, why is Earl culprit wrong? Uh? Culprit is a very special word, okay? And the word culprit is, you, you must understand what this word is in order for you to guess whether it's a uh or the. Culprit means like the main person or thing that's responsible. Okay, so if it is the main person of the main thing, we, we should believe that this thing is quite important, right? If it's important, do we use a or do we use the? Okay, if something is pretty important and we have mentioned it, what it is now, okay, I mentioned it specifically in name, this tetrabutyl hydroquinone. If I mention it specifically, I cannot use the word a. If I mention specifically, I have to use the words the, okay? So the answer is the, yeah, it should be the culprit. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. Number 12, which word is spelled correctly, boys and girls, in three, two, one. What is going on? 33.3% .3 of you got this wrong. Hey, you know why? I tell you why. This word, right, both of you, all of you, most of you got it right. The word that most people got wrong was this word over here. Boys and girls, remember this if your life depended on it. If your life depended on it. Separate is not spelled S-E-P-E-R-A-T-E. -E -E. It's spelled S-E-P-A-R-A-T-E. -E. Okay, the answer is number four. Okay, separate is spelled P-A-R-A-T-E. -E. Everybody, everybody, even myself included, thinks that it's spelled S-E-P-E-R-A-T-E. -E. Separate is separate A-A-R-A-T-E. -E. This question was... <coughs> 15 bubbles, if I'm not wrong. Do I eat pork? Yes, I do. Am I unclean? I don't know. Okay, uh, let's do the vocabulary questions. We've got roughly 12 minutes. Let's answer this together. Marianne was upset when she found out that she had not been chosen. Marianne was upset when she found out that she had not been chosen to represent her school in the debating competition. Which word has the same meaning as the underlined word? Okay, you have one minute to do this. Question 13 in 3, 2, 1. Wow, good job, good job, good job. 80% of you got this right. 80% of you got this right. The correct word here, let me explain to you the words. Uh, this is the only clue I'm going to give you for today for this section here. The correct answer is number 4, dismayed. I do have a very strange arrow. Okay, the word dismayed means upset. Rectified means to make something correct. Okay, to make... Okay, so to rectify means to make something correct. I, I made a mistake yesterday in my slides, but today I rectified it, I made it correct. Befuddled means to look kind of blur or kind of confused. Okay, affable, boys and girls. Affable means to be very friendly. 
And this is going to be the only clue I'm going to give you for vocabulary builder. So next question and coming up to you in three, two, one. Okay, uh, how did the hamster escape from its cage? When I locked it, Harold asked me with a puzzled expression on his face. Let's go, let's go. Okay, so um, uh, not too bad. Okay, all, most of you got it correct. The word is befuddled. The word is befuddled, which means I, I gave you an explanation earlier, right? Earlier I said that it was blur or confused. Right, and be fuddled here means puzzled, which means blur or confused. So I gave you a clue, not really, really a clue, but uh, enough clue for you to answer this question. All right, let's move on. Number three, how could you be so rude to your mother? Shouting at her and slamming the door in her face, your behavior is truly shocking. 15 in three, two, one. Um, 70% of us got it right. Not the best answered question so far, but okay. Uh, let's tell you what this word means. Appalling means very shocking. Okay, you can say, oh my gosh, it's so appalling what the girls did to the other girl at the car park. Very shocking. Okay, but if you are rude, right? The word for rude, insolent is the same meaning as rude. So the answer is number two, right? You insolent, cow, right? Means that that person is very rude. Another word that I want to teach you today is this word that's very similar to insolent and it confuses a lot of students. Cedric, stop making me, stop telling me about songs with bad words. I can't play them in here. Okay. Indolent means to be very lazy. Okay. So if you say someone is indolent, that person, he or she is lazy. If you say that person's insolent, he or she is rude. Okay, if you are, if you think what they do is shocking, then they are appalling. Okay, two more questions before we call it a day. Material girl, is it by Madonna? That's the only material girl I know. Okay, um, synonym builder number four and three, two, one. Rectifying, right? Like I mentioned to you earlier, rectified, right? It comes from the word to correct or to make something correct. So if you're like me and you think about the past very often and you think about the past and it makes you happy, that is to reminisce. To reminisce means to recall, but reminisce and recall a little bit different. Recall is very neutral. Oh, I recall yesterday you told me that you wanted to go to the market. It's to remember something. Reminisce has a similar meaning, but reminisce is positive recall. Okay. You cannot say, I reminisce my mother beating me when I was young. <laughs> no, you cannot reminisce that. Unless you like being beaten, then I don't know why. Right? But you can say, oh, I reminisce the time when I was young and I would play football with my buddies. That is a reminisce. Okay? To reminisce is a positive recall of something. To talk about the past in a positive, happy manner is to reminisce. All right, number five. The salesman pestered the old lady till she had no choice but to buy the item he was selling, right? Any of you got pestered recently when you go around the streets and you are wanting to go into the shopping center but some guy approaches you with some card, say, oh, do you want to donate to this or that? And you run away, but they follow you wherever you go, right? They are pestering you. Another word for pester, boys and girls, in three, two, one. Um, the correct word here, Someone or something that is very persistent and constantly bothers you, right? Very annoying, very bothersome, will not go away. That person is badgering you, okay? Dodge means to like, to like, whoa, like to, to miss something is to dodge. But to badger is to be very persistent and annoying, Okay, to do something that's very persistent and annoying is to badger, right? So the correct answer is number one, pestered, badgered. Now, where does the word badger come from? It comes from this animal called the honey badger. Okay, boys and girls. So if you want to go, you can go, but uh, here's some little trivia for you before I end off today's lesson. The honey badger is uh, uh, an animal that you can find in America um, that is very persistent, okay? How persistent is it? In order to eat honey, it will go climb into the beehive and eat the honey while the bees are stinging it and it will not die. 
it will it will go all lengths to eat honey and regardless of how many bees sting it it will not run away it will continue eating the honey that's a badger it refuses to give up like those salesmen that you see outside the shopping centers they refuse to give up as well uh, and they eat anything and they're so um, marvelously voracious that they eat cheetahs and they even eat eagles okay um, and all their prey that they eat right the snakes that they eat they are venomous snakes as well. So they eat venomous snakes such as puffer adder and the cape cobra. They are so tough. They are so persistent that even when they're bitten by the snakes and they'll get affected by the poison, right? The poison doesn't kill them. They will suffer the poison and go on and attack the snakes after they have been poisoned by the snakes, okay? So if you want to know honey badgers, yes, they are annoying. They are pests, but they're extremely hard to kill and they keep coming back for more kind of like cockroaches. So those of you who need to go, you may go. Uh, today, what we have learned, grammatical errors and commonly misspelled words. And we learned these five words today. Repeat after me. Badger, reminiscing, insolent, defuddled, which means confused or blur, blur, and dismayed, which means to be very sad. All right. If there's nothing else, boys and girls, thank you very much. Uh, I'll leave you in the good hands and a warm embrace.